an Irish student leaves home to travel abroad to study her whole life ahead of her until her path crossed with the wrong person who took it from her. Nicola Furlong was a 21 year old DCU student from Curraclough in County Wexford. She was described as happy go lucky. She was a real girly girl. She loved fashion and that she pretty much, you know, got on with everybody, talked to everybody. She was the eldest of three girls. So there was Nicola, who was 21, Andrea, who was around 18, and the youngest was Hannah, who was only 12. Her parents then were Andrew and Angela Furlong. Her childhood sweetheart was also named Danny Furlong. Nicola was studying economics in DCU up here in Dublin. And as part of the degree, there was the option to study abroad, you know, for a year. And it seems that she had already done uh, Japanese, I think, in secondary school. So she decided to go to Japan to study business and uh, Japanese, because obviously she kind of already had a, a leg up on that. From what I gather, she was kind of hesitant about going. She seemed, it seems that she was a home bird. So, you know, she didn't really know if she wanted to go, this type of thing. But family and friends, you know, they encouraged her. She would do well, obviously, because she could already speak the language. She would do, you know, she would learn more of it. And Nicola herself didn't want the first two years of her degree to be a waste. So in the autumn of 2011, she headed over to Japan to study in a university just north of Tokyo. It's said that it took her several weeks to settle in, but that she then, you know, started to enjoy the lifestyle and the culture. And she actually came home, I believe she came home in December, and that was her 21st. And then I think she came home again in the new year, in 2012, another time. So she had been home sometimes when people would do these years abroad. Because, you know, it's so short that they don't come home, or especially if it's far and it's expensive and stuff like this. So then we are at May 2012. And she only had about 10 weeks left studying, and then she would be going home. On May 23rd, 2012, Nicola and another friend headed to Tokyo to go to see Nicki Minaj in concert. Just hours before this, Nicola had texted her mom to say that they were getting ready, that they had their tan on, and that she was excited for the concert, and then said, you know, about that there was only 10 weeks and she couldn't wait to get home. After the concert, Nicola and her friend stopped two men to ask if they spoke English. So at this point, I'll just say that one source says that they had missed their train home, but I haven't seen that anywhere else, so I'm not really sure. I'm not sure if the plan had always been to stay in Tokyo or if the plan had been to go home. But we can come back to that later. So it turns out that these men did speak English because they were American. And they were 19-year-old Richard Hines and 23-year-old James Blackstone, who went by the stage name King Tight. I'm going to say now that I apologise for any um, mispronouncing of words. So they asked for directions to Shibuya district, which is supposed to be kind of like where all the nightlife and stuff was. And so the two men said that they would show them. I don't know, did they walk here? Did they get a taxi or what they done? When they got there, there are different kind of uh, variations. So originally when I started this, the first source said that as a thank you for showing them that the girl said they'd buy them a drink. And so they all went into the Scramble Cafe. And then the other variations are kind of, they just, they just say that they went for a drink or that the men then invited them to go for a drink. So anyway, whatever way it happened and ended up, the four of them went for a drink in Scramble Cafe. And they were having fun and they were, it was said, you know, they, they were dancing and stuff. But then something happened. Nicola's friend would later say that she can't remember anything after James Blackston handed her a shot of tequila. The rest would have to be put together by CCTV. Shortly before midnight, the two men and the two women got into a taxi. CCTV would show Hines in the front and Blackston in the back with the two girls. It would also show that the girls were unconscious. After his trial, Blackson's defence attorney, Sutomu Nakamura, would tell RTE Primetime about the CCTV footage. And he said, We can see four persons, two guys and two girls. And the two girls were very clearly unconscious. When he was asked what Blackson had done in the back of the car, he said, quote, he was touching one girl's private parts. Just a bit on the two men. So a 19-year-old Richard Hines is from Memphis, Tennessee, and he is like a Christian musician. 
he had graduated high school the year before and he was a keyboard player so he went touring with a R&B star called AI and so this is why he is in Tokyo and Blackston was a back, uh, background dancer, backing dancer so I believe this is why he was also on tour with AI. Hines was due to return home on June 20th. So back to that night, the men had carried the girls to the taxi. And when they arrived at Creo Plaza Hotel, they again took the girls out and carried them. Like they were, they were slumped, like they weren't walking to the entrance of the hotel. And at this point, a hotel staff member gets the two men wheelchairs. They put the girls in and wheel them to their rooms. Nicola's mother, Angela, would tell Primetime that they saw the CCTV footage. We saw the video. They showed it to us at the trial. It was awful. She couldn't stand to put two girls into wheelchairs. That's some sort of sick mind that would do that. Richard Hines wheeled Nicola Furlong to room 1427. At 4.11am, the police were called by hotel staff after another resident complained about hearing noises from their room. When they went up, they found Nicola unconscious lying on the ground near the bed. Richard was standing close to her. It would later transpire that Blackson had assaulted Nicola's friend, who would later be referred to as victim A. The two men were arrested, you know, questioned and arrested and all this. And at first, Richard Hines' name wasn't released, at least not by the Japanese media anyway. And the reason for this, and this will be extremely important later, age of like adulthood in Japan is 20. So because Richard was 19, they couldn't name him or didn't, you know, didn't want to name him because essentially he was a minor. Back home in Ireland at 7.50 a.m., Andrew Furlong heard a knock at the door. As he got there, he could see the high vis through the glass. And when he opened the door, there were two guardies standing there. He let them in and he would later say that he thought it was something simple like an unpaid fine. And then one of the guardy said, are you the father of Nicola Rose Furlong? And he said, oh Christ, please don't tell me she's been in an accident. And the guard said, no, it's worse than that. She's dead. Angela would be in work when she'd hear. And so Andrew and Angela and their daughters, Andrea and Hannah, knew that Nicola had died. But it would take a few days before they realised why. So a couple of days later, they got a call from the Irish Embassy in Japan. And this is when they would find out that Nicola had been murdered. The family didn't get Nicola's remains back until the Thursday and the funeral was held on the Sunday. And Japanese authorities wanted Andrew and his family out there on the Monday. They wanted to know about her life and, you know, anything else that might give some indication of what happened. Andrew would actually say that his passport was out of date and it was when the guardy had obviously came to tell him this and he realised that his passport was out of date, that one of them took it from him and sent it to Dublin that day so that it would be done immediately. Nicholas' friend, who I said will be known as Victor May in the trial, they actually were trying, you know, they had her there obviously to continue answering questions and helping them as much as they could. And so it was like a, a thing, like a big deal to actually allow her to go home to Ireland to attend Nicholas funeral. So Blackstone's trial will be the first to come up. As I said already, there was CCTV in the taxi. So there was actual footage of him assaulting victim A. It would also transpire that a few weeks before this, he done the same thing, a Brazilian would say that again, she went for a drink with Blackston and when he gave her a drink or a shot or whatever, she lost consciousness soon after that. So he was convicted for the two assaults. Victim A would give her statement through a video link as she said, and she said that her or Nicola had never become unconscious from drinking before and that they didn't do drugs. She said, quote, I find it very difficult to believe I was unconscious for so long solely as a result of alcohol. I can only think it's because something was put in my drink. Blackson was sentenced to three years in prison and he would be released by 2015. Hines originally obviously said that he hadn't done anything to Nicola, but Dr. Kenishi Yoshida, who done the postmortem, he would say 
Nicholas consumption of alcohol is irrelevant as there are very clear findings of strong pressure being put on her neck. He also said that she was conscious and that she fought back while she was strangled. The trial heard how Hines strangled her for several minutes and that she died painfully. It's believed that Hines had raped Nicola one time more. I don't know, or was it in the beginning? I don't know, but essentially four hours had passed in this time. And they believe that she had become conscious again and tried to get away, tried to fight him off. And that this is why he then strangled her. I believe maybe she even got off the bed and, you know, closer to the door because she was found on the floor, not on the bed. Trials in Japan are actually like very long. They go on, they go on for a long time. There's actually like several hearings, several, I suppose several trials, but they're different hearings. And once a criminal case actually gets to court, it's almost certain that there will be a conviction. I'm just going to read um, the transcript of what was said in the taxi between the two men while the women were unconscious. Uh, as you know, I try not to swear on the channel, so I think you'll get it from what I'm saying anyway. So the men in the taxi are heard saying, These bees fell into our lap. We got to keep them effed up, says Hines. Blackson says, We are going to eff them. The men then fist bump. George Ashizawa said that, you know, Hines' defence of what he'd done was just irrational and that he had dishonoured Nicola. So that's going to actually bring me to his defence. So as I said, in the beginning, he was basically like, no, I didn't, I didn't touch her, I didn't do anything. And then it changed to that uh, she had asked him during sex, you know, to um, put his hands around her throat and stuff like this. And, you know, we hear that a lot. You hear a lot of murder trials, like, say, like, oh, no. You know, we were messing around, like we were having sex, we were having rough sex. Um, oh no, she asked me to do that and all. And like there's a long process between the like 30 seconds that you're saying you've done it and then the end result. But anyway, so he said that this is what happened. She asked him to and he did. But I'm just going to read some stuff out from his testimony and his defence. His defence team at one point argued that she had died from an overdose of uh, drink and drugs, but the only drug found in her system was a date rape drug. So during this consensual act of um, strangulation, he said that she did not show resistance, suffering or fear. He said that when he noticed that she had stopped breathing, that he tried to resuscitate her by performing CPR. He was asked to explain a blood stain that was on the bed or on the mattress or something and it had matched Nicola's DNA so he was obviously asked to match this and he said that she vomited blood while they were having sex and that after he asked did she want to continue and they did. He would also say that Nicola started shouting at him when he refused to have full intercourse with her and that was when I pressed her neck. She was talking loudly first but gra gradually she quietened down. I remember her hearing her breathe abnormally and she began to lose consciousness. So there was just a lot of back and forth flip-flopping. Like you were having sex and she vomited blood and then it was no, she was shouting at you because you wouldn't have full intercourse with her and the reason you wouldn't was because you didn't have a condom but you would then acknowledge that the police found a condom in your like jeans or your wallet or whatever. And then you would say that the reason you started choking her was because she had already asked you to do it earlier when you had sex. And so when she was shouting at you for not wanting sex, you started to choke her because you knew it pleased her sexually, because it did before, and also to stop her shouting because you didn't want to have sex. The defence also tried to explain away the CCTV. Now, I will say, I will point out straight away, I am not black, I am not a man, and I am not an African-American. But he tried to explain that what he was saying was ironic. And his defence lawyer said, in your community and between black men, is this normal conversation? And that Hines said, who is an African-American, said, yes. How is that normal conversation to be saying we're going to, like these girls are so bad that we're going to do these things to them. I don't think that's normal conversation for anyone who's not a predator. Hines would also claim that he had no idea that 
Blackson was assaulting the friend in the back. Nicholas family were very clearly disturbed at, you know, at all this being said in the testimony. And Hines kept referring to Nicola as Nicky when he'd be talking this stuff. And so they had to ask the judge to tell him to stop referring her to as Nicky. He then would tell the court, I do not believe I was the cause of her death. I had no intent or reason to hurt, harm or kill her. Richard Hines was found guilty of the murder of Nicola Furlong. So this is where that little bit of information that I said earlier comes into play. Richard Hines could not be sentenced to life for murder because in the eyes of Japanese law, he was a minor because he was only 19, not 20. And so all that the judge could sentence him to was a minimum of five years and a maximum of 10 years. Like I said, Blackston was released in 2015 and has gone on to have this great lifestyle back in the US where, I don't know, people are probably nearly oblivious to the fact that this has even happened because it was on the other side of the world. There are photos of him with Snoop Dogg. He is engaged. I think he could actually have even been married by now. And Danny Furlong, Nicola's boyfriend, would come out to, you know, to slam this behaviour that he was just going about his life then, you know, flaunting all this. Richard Hines has never shown remorse for killing Nicola. As far as I know, he still denies that it was done intentionally. And after five years, he wasn't allowed out, you know, parole or anything like that wasn't allowed to happen. Because like that, he showed no remorse. And so he essentially had to do the full 10 years. A professional singer, Elena Rogers from America, testified in the trial that she actually went out with Richard three years ago when he was 16 and she was 17 and would say that not once was he rough, you know, aggressive, never hit her, never done anything untoward. The judge, Masayuki Ashizawa, said that the crime was atrocious, atrocious and vicious and basically said that the fact that Nicola had been strangled for, you know, for several minutes showed murderous intent. The Justice Ministry in Japan said that Hines has only a moderate chance of rehabilitation. He was housed in Fuchu Prison in the west of Tokyo. So I'm sure as you can all imagine, it is now 2022. And the Japanese authorities would stay in contact, you know, once or twice a year with the furlongs to inform them just, you know, kind of what's going on and stuff like that. And the Taoiseach Mihal Man, while in Japan, actually said that he hopes that the Japanese um, government would like that consult with the furlongs and stuff before he would be released. Andrew would actually go on to say that he doesn't care, he didn't want to know unless it was that he was living in a box. Hines has now been released. He was essentially deported immediately and it is believed that he is now back in Memphis. He's 29. He gets to live his entire life. And as I said before, how many people over there even really know the story? You know, I don't know how... It was big here, obviously, because Nicola was Irish. I don't really know how far it travelled in terms of news. And so obviously that's kind of one of the points of making this video is so that any of my American viewers can see it. Maybe you'll even share it. Maybe people you even know people in Tennessee. Nicola's family obviously struggle all the time. You know, her dad said that he can't visit her graveyard. He can't touch anything in her bedroom. And she says that she works every anniversary of Nicola's death. She just can't sit at the graveyard all day anymore. DCU actually planted a tree in Nicola's memory. And this is something beautiful, I thought. So sorry, I have to read my notes. Basically, like a memorial had been done, you know, in, in this garden. And these two women, essentially, it was being asked to be done every year for Nicola. And so these two women decided to create Coon Angel. Coon, Coon Angel. I'm sorry, it's Irish. Coon Angel. It basically means Angel Harbour. It's located opposite the Riverbank House Hotel in Wexford. So, like, it's a little garden and it was done by local women, Bernadette O'Leary and Lorraine Smith. And so Andrew said that he regularly visits it and he actually recommends, you know, he asks any parent in Ireland that has lost a child to go visit it. Nicki Minaj actually came out with a tweet the following week after Nicola's murder. She also would clarify um, 
Perez Hilton is like, you know, kind of like a celeb gossip person. And he actually originally reported that it was her backing dancers that were involved. And so she came out to say, you know, no, it wasn't them. None of them had anything to do with this. And they are all already back in the US. So guys, I don't really know what else to say. Um, It's just such a horrible case. Nicola, actually, she's so pretty. And she actually reminds me of someone that I know. And she's just, yeah, she just has this lovely little smile. And like that, she, you know, she's only 21. I think we all think we're big girls and boys at 21 and we're not, you know, we're so young. We have still our whole lives ahead of her. Yeah, so I decided to do this case. I had read about it before, but I decided to do it because of the fact that Hines was being released. I actually, the time just flew by. I actually was like, oh yeah, I'll do that. You know, to say kind of like, oh, and he's going to be coming up for release, you know, in the next few weeks. And then all of a sudden it was like, on the on the weekend, it was like, Oh yeah, Heinz has been released and he's now being deported. Um, that's why I kind of wanted to do this one. Please let me know what you think of the case. What do you think about the fact that in Japan you were and um, you're not an adult till twenty? It's that's a bit mad, isn't it? But um, if you're from a different country, um, let me know if there are any kind of unusual little bits like that that might be different than here in Ireland, and that might interest me and the other viewers. So have a look. Read comment. Yeah, so that's kind of it really. I won't ramble on this time. Yeah, okay. Thank you for watching. Thank you for all the support. <gasps> 2,000 followers. I think I'm at like 220 something. Oh, I, uh, sorry, I'm rambling now. I was at like 2020, I think. And I was like, ah, 2020, we need to get past, <laughs> we need to get past 2020. And then it was 2021. And then I was like, oh, I need 2022. Because we're in 2022, I need that. So I've gotten past that now. So yay go me. I've passed the year that we're in. Yeah, anyway, stop rambling, Casey. And we shall see you all in the next video. Let me know what you're thinking of the shorts, actually, will you please? Because sometimes I feel like, I don't know. This is another way of rambling for me. Well, yeah, um, if you find them interesting or anything like that, I'm trying to think of different things to bring, you know, that type of way. But anyway, yeah, thank you for all your support. See you later. See you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.